Hi, this is Lefty Dad, and I'm going to be demonstrating and playing the fourth quarter of a NBA basketball game with the computer version of Stratomatic Basketball. And this is the uh, season that goes back as far as the seasons go for Stratomatic. It's the 1960-61 season. This particular game is was played on November 5th, 1960, and that year the Celtics won the championship. It was uh, the year that Oscar Robertson and Jerry West were rookies, and in this particular game, Oscar Robertson is the point guard for the Cincinnati Royals, who are taking on the Boston Celtics. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, the Celtics do have a 13-point lead, but they also have their second team in for the most part, except for Russell, Bill Russell. So uh, this is how the defense will line up the assignments. Uh, and all of this looks really ancient. The game looks like <coughs> it was made in, in 1990, <coughs> and it, it was probably made in 1990, and they haven't really done very much to improve it. And you can see these icons here in the center of the screen look kind of ridiculous. Uh, but w we're going to be playing Oscar Robertson. You can play defensively. You can assign your players to play them to sag if you think that they're going to drive, so you're laying back a little bit <coughs> to keep them, to cut them off driving to the basket. You can play them normally, which is balanced, or you can play them close if you think that they're going to take a lot of outside shots, but then, of course, that creates a vulnerability for them to dribble around you. So Robertson, he's... He's a very dangerous player. He's a rookie, and uh, we're playing him normally. This uh, Davis player, I, I really, uh, I don't know, where were you in 1960? <laughs> I was not very old, but I don't ever remember this Davis guy playing. But he, he doesn't drive, so play him close. Jack Twyman is a very dangerous player, too, but both... Uh, he has three fouls, Robertson has three fouls, the center ha has three fouls. Nobody's really in foul trouble yet, but if they get another foul, uh, or, then they're liable to get their fifth foul after that. So uh, Russell is a tremendous shot blocker, but we'll get this game underway, and you can see how it works. So the jump is controlled by Boston, and uh, you can see the, the red print down here type means that it's the board game information. So for the most part, this is a direct port of the board game, although it does have a few improvements uh, for statistical accuracy from the board game. But the upshot of it all is that we have in 11 minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the quarter, 19 seconds left on the 24-second uh, clock, Bill, now you can hardly read this. I think this is one of the most ridiculous things about the computer game is that they think people can read this red small font color against a black background. And in fact, the, the timer up here, this 11 minutes and 55 seconds for years and years was that dark red too. In fact, I went in with Microsoft Paint and changed it to white so it looks like it does now. But between these, the 11 and 55, there's like a colon, you know, like uh, to, to mark between minutes and seconds. And can you can you see the the two little dots that represent a colon? Uh, and then the next year, the game company said, oh, some people couldn't read the scoreboard time, so we changed it to white. But I wish they'd change all these red color. I, I can't really, it's hard to see when the bonus comes on here after foul fouls. It's grayed out right now, but then it goes to that red color when they have committed too many fouls. Anyway, back to the game. Bill Sharman has the ball outside. Uh, according to the rating of the game, 37% of the time he will sh take an outside shot. 50% of the time, 55% of the time he will drive. You can see on his card here, this is his rating for the outside shot and for penetrating or driving. Uh, he only shot 42 percent so they're not exactly great they're pretty much balanced and uh, you uh, he doesn't have foul trouble if he had bad foul trouble then 
I wouldn't want him to drive, but that's not really a factor. One other thing to take into account is that he's guarded by Oscar Robertson. So Robertson is not guarding Casey Jones. He switched over to Bill Sharman. Robertson is a really good defender against outside shots. The, the smaller the range of numbers down here, O stands for outside shot, the better they are. Their numbers between one and 12, uh, 2 and 12. And against driving or P penetration, he's even better. And the Celtics have a 13 point lead. So I think, uh, and uh, they're guarding this N over here means that they're guarding him normally. So they're not guarding him closely. So I think we'll try to take advantage of, of the outside shot. And what this means is the black square down here is like a, a six-sided dice and four of the sides are black <clears throat> and if they come up then you take the shooter's numbers so it's completely what the shooter would do if it is a D like it is now then it's the team defense and uh, they have a pretty good team defense Cincinnati does and you can see there's nothing there so he misses the shot if it would have been an X it would have been the defender who's defending uh, Charmin and the two to five. I would have rolled a two to five. X means it's a made shot. B means it would have been blocked. This would be a seven. And of course, the the two dice rolled uh, added together. So a seven has three chances of occurring, whereas a, a two or a three only have a one chance. So the more that these outcomes are near the center, a six, seven, eight the greater the chance they, do, they have of, of happening. But anyway, he missed the shot, and the rebound is by Jack Twyman. They bring the ball up. It's stolen by Gene Guerrilla. He's another Celtic that I never saw. He's not very good. And now the Celtics bring the ball up court, and, uh, ha and they're setting uh, up their half-court offense. Casey Jones has the ball. He's guarded closely. He is uh, he, on the second team for Bob Cousy. He is not a very good shot. They're guarding him close. It says up here that 57% of the time he takes an outside shot. And you can see these graphs here that also show you what he can do. <laughs> this big one means miss. And it also records down here throughout the game. He, he has only taken three shots. He's not made a shot. He has four points. I guess those are all from free throws. But he's tried to penetrate or drive to the hoop twice has been unsuccessful and once on a fast break he was unsuccessful but I think uh, that I'll have him try to drive to the hoop and it's a D6 so it's against the team defense and because they were playing him close you can see they were very vulnerable to the uh, to driving but of all the outcomes here I got the bad outcome so he misses the shot Russell is very good at getting rebounds, but this time he wasn't a factor. Now, Cincinnati brings it up, and they it's stolen by uh, Lostikoff, who is also a player I never saw, but he, but he was a guy the Celtics would send out to beat up <laughs> the other players. He was the enforcer, but he's really bad at shooting the ball. So they fouled him. The foul is against this Ralph Davis guy. And, but they fouled Casey Jones, so Casey's going to try to get his fifth point on a free throw, and he does because you can see it's a 10. Actually, for free throws, it shows these X's that the player gets, which is how it would be in the board game, but in, in this computer game, they actually fine-tune it, so they're, roll, they're choosing a random number out of 1,000, which, which uh, matches what their free throw percentage would be during uh, the in real life so he makes the, in back then every time in 1960 every time you got fouled uh, on a non-shooting basis you'd get one free throw until you had committed too many team fouls then you get two free throws so there was always a free throw on every foul now Phil Jordan comes down he gets an open shot uh, on a pass from Ralph Davis and as you can see it's black seven he makes it so Celtics come down, set up a half-court offense. The ball goes over to Guerrilla. 
he's really terrible. And I'm just waiting, I would say, to the eight-minute mark, since they do have a 12-point lead, uh, to bring in the, f the first team. He's going to have to take an outside shot. He's pl being played closely, uh, and he, I, this is going to be kind of bad. He won't, he won't even come close to it, probably. So he shoots. Oh, it's a turnover. So uh, at least he didn't hurt his shooting percentage. Uh, but he, uh, I guess, double dribbled. Now Cincinnati comes down, and it's three straight steals by the Celtics. Casey Jones steals at this time. They, they're in their half-court offense, although they're, they're supposed to go at, uh, use the fast break as often as possible. Once again, we have 10 minutes left in the, in the game. Guerrilla is outside. He's guarded close. Now, this is a kind of a strange outcome over here. If somebody was being double teamed, then he would make the basket. But nobody's being double teamed, so he doesn't make the basket. 15-footer misses. Jack Twyman gets the rebound. They're going to fast break. And Robertson goes to the hoop, and he is fouled. So... That's an F2. It, mean he, it means he's fouled. Now, he was being guarded on that fast break by Bill Sharman of the Celtics, but the foul goes against Casey Jones. And that's his second foul, so there's no foul trouble. Now, Robertson, who already has 23 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists, he, he averaged a triple-double that year in his rookie season. So um, he's going to get two shots. And the first shot over here, you can see... It's a 2-6. It's highlighted by yellow. It's good. His second shot is also good. So now it's a 10-point game. And I, I think that this will end up being a close game probably. So the Celtics bring the ball up, and they're going to go to Gurley again. I've got to get the first team in. But he gets defended very well, so he has to pass the ball to any player that has this, you can't really see it very well, but there's a yellow rectangle here, and it has a few asterisks in it. And that means that these players shoot more often than the other players on the court. So a lot of circumstances come up where they have to pass the ball to somebody that shoots a lot. And that would be Bill Sharman. Bill Sharman is being not guarded close, so I think we'll let him take another outside shot. You can see over here, so far in the game, he's taken two outside shots, and he's made, or four outside shots, and he's made two of them, and now he puts up the jumper, but the team defense denies him uh, from getting a basket. It's rebounded by this Jordan guy. It's not, I don't think it's Phil Jordan. I guess that's, it is Phil Jordan, but not Phil Jackson. I was thinking of the guy who eventually became the Lakers head coach. And on the fast break, the, the team defense of the Celtics <coughs> denies him. He's a big player too, so he's not really going to be a good candidate on a fast break. Now the Celtics fast break, and, and it's to Russell. He's dribbling down the court, and he's a big guy too, so you can see here, I, I can show you, here are his success ratings for a fast break, and they're really bad. Now I could just call a timeout and take the ball out of his hands, but I do think I'll he, he, he's tried two fast breaks and hasn't made it all. I have a 10-point lead. I'll try anyway. And the team defense can't stop him, so he does get a basket because they broke down in transition. So they're back up to a 12-point lead. Now the ball goes to the left forward for the uh, Cincinnati Royals. That's what they were back then. Uh, they became eventually the Kansas City Royals and the Kansas City Omaha Royals, and I, uh, the Kings, pardon me, they switched their name to the Kings when they left Cincinnati. And uh, Lostikov, Lostikov, who is a terrible shooter, also fouls a lot. So he gets his second foul. We're getting closer to that eight-minute mark where, when I want to bring the other players back in. Hub Reed will shoot one shot, and he makes it. So now... They are well, yeah, 11 points away, and the Celtics take the ball out, and Sharman passes it to, to Russell. 18 seconds left on the 
24 second clock. Russell is positioned inside so he can only shoot an inside shot or he can shoot a power inside, uh, which uh, I don't hardly ever use that. That would only be if I was trying to get good and fouled because they foul a lot. Russell backs in and it's good and fouled. That X plus means it's, it's a good basket and he is fouled. So he's fouled by Hub Reed. Uh, and I never saw him, uh, I, I have no idea what, uh, he was before my time, so to speak, so he can play center and he can play uh, left forward. So Russell now has 23 points, and Russell had, has a really low field goal percentage, and as a free thrower, he's terrible, 55% this year, but he plays practically every minute of the game, and he gets a lot of offensive rebounds, 16 rebounds total in the game so far, so he does end up getting a lot of points just because he's always in the game. So now he has, I think, 24 points, and we're getting close, 14 point lead, and the ball goes to Oscar Robertson. He drives to the hoop, and his defender, Casey Jones, who's a, who's a great defender, uh, there was no possibility that Jones was going to let him get a basket. In fact, there was a good likelihood he was going to block the shot, so he misses the shot. Guerrilla gets the rebound. There's a fast break opportunity, but it breaks down, and now Casey Jones has the ball. He's being guarded close, and I think that we'll let him penetrate. He has not. He's tried three times, and he hasn't made a shot yet, but he looks for an opening, and he he generally tries to draw the foul when he drives to the hoop. Uh, in fact, that's all he can do unless he's wide open. He has a slight chance of making the basket, but he didn't make the basket. So now he's, he's 0 for 5, I think. Oscar Roberts gets the ball. He brings it up court, on, r rushing, and he gets it to Ralph Davis, who is able to make the fast break hoop. And you'll see Oscar up here, he'll get his 11th assist, I'm sure. No, he didn't get his 11th. Maybe they already put it up there, I didn't see it. Now, Boston still has a 12-point lead. Now I have a chance to get the ball to anybody. Uh, Gene Guerrilla, the right forward, supposedly has the ball, but he can pass it to anybody he wants. So we'll go to Charmin. You can see he's got these... You have anywhere between one and three. The more asterisks you have in the yellow rectangle, the more likely you are to be able to get the shot. Will Chamberlain that year had four, and that was kind of like a brand new deal because I think Chamberlain averaged 50 points that year. But we'll go to Charmin, and we'll let him take an outside shot. He's two for five on the outside shot, and he misses that one. And now it's rebounded by... Oh, it's a, it, it was an offensive rebound. Guerrilla tried to put it back up, but he missed. And now Lustikoff gets the offensive rebound, and this will probably... And, it, it, you're, you know, you're very much like, more likely to get uh, a basket on a second-chance opportunity and Lust, because he's right underneath the basket, and he does score. So Boston is extending their lead now, and I, can, I could, in a sense, leave the second... Uh, team players out longer because the other first team players all uh, were kind of in foul trouble. Like uh, many of them had three fouls. Like it's not so important uh, near the end of the game. And Jordan, Phil Jordan, who's the center for the Kent, for the uh, Cincinnati Royals, takes a shot. He has an O. If he would have received a really great pass. Then he would, he would have had an open shot. O stands for open shot, but it was not an open shot, so he doesn't make the shot. And he gets his own rebound, and it's blocked. And Russell and Chamberlain, uh, he's on the Philadelphia Warriors, are incredible at blocking shots, even though there were no block shot statistics for that season, but everybody knows they were incredible. Reed gets the offensive rebound, and anytime you get an offensive rebound, that's considered an open shot. So he has an O here, so he does score on the second chance opportunity. Now it's a 12-point lead, so now I'm thinking maybe 
if, it, if they get it under 10 points, I will immediately... Now there's a switch, and Phil Jordan, who apparently had been guarding not the center, uh, not Russell, he had been guarding Lostikov, the left forward, power forward, switches and he's covering Charm. Oh, I'm sorry, he's covering Charmin. So Phil Jordan uh, switches off of Bill Russell and he's guarding my shooting guard, Phil Charmin. And anytime you have a switch with a little man on offense against the big man, you want to try to drive against him because he is not, he's going to be limited defensively. So he drives and he scores. And you can see Phil Charmin, Bill Charmin against Phil Jordan, open penetration versus normal defense. So he scores, we're back up to a 14 point lead, eight minutes to go in the quarter. And now Oscar Robertson shoots outside and he just brought the ball up and he just shoots it and he hits it. So it's a 12 point lead, the Celtics come up and Charmin scans the court who does he want to pass it to? They're all really bad options, really. Russell, uh, I, I think we'll go with Casey Jones and, and have him drive again towards the hoop because they're guarding him close. See if he can get fouled. No, they. Ralph Davis blocks the shot. So Oscar Robertson picks up the block shot and they try to fast break, but Phil Jordan messes it up. He travels with the ball, and now the Celtics come back. Lustikoff has it. Reed is defending him, and he is fouled while dribbling the ball. So now we have seven and a half minutes to go, and I think I'll bring back uh, some of the second team. So Cousy, Bill, uh, Bob Cousy will come back in, and I will bring back Sam Jones, although he's still, he's played a lot of minutes. He's had a really weird game. He got in foul trouble early, and then he played a lot in the third quarter. So he's still, he's, this S stands for stamina, and you want to have a one. Uh, they can degrade all the way to five, and then they're really bad. He's at a two, so he really should be at a one before he comes in. And uh, I think we have uh, Lustikov shooting. Uh, I'll bring Ramsey, Frank Ramsey, back in to play the small forward. And now we'll let Lustikov, who's, who's, I'm sure he's a horrible free throw shooter. Let's see. He is, well, he's a 64%. That Back then in 1960, that was probably kind of close to average. He makes the free throw. He's averaging 3.7 points per game. And uh, I want to get Tommy Heinsohn back in the game. That's really the only other player. So Hub Reed tries to, he had an open inside shot, but it came in between what would be two, off, two results for an offensive foul. So he really tried to bull his way in there, and he's lucky he didn't get an offensive foul. Frank Ramsey gets the uh, rebound. They try to fast break, but Russell creates a turnover by traveling. And now Phil Jordan for the Royals has it inside. He can't get a good shot off because of the help defense of the Celtics. He misses it. Russell made him alter the shot. Russell gets the rebound. Here comes the fast break. And the fast break is down in a hurry to Lustikoff, who would be terrible. So I'm going to call timeout and bring Tommy Heinsohn back into the game. So Heinsohn's back in. Heinsohn has four fouls, so if he gets another foul, I'll have to take him back out until the last part of the game. And Sam Jones and Frank Ramsey also have three fouls. They're not as in bad shape. But the Celtics have suffered from foul trouble this game. So they go right to Heinsohn. You can see now Cousy has three asterisks. Ramsey has three. Heinsohn has three. Sam so now they're offensive uh, players are really in the game. Heinsohn goes inside. Their defense is pretty good inside against him. Team defense, a lot of help, and he misses the shot. So uh, 
he had that short jump hook read for the Royals, grabs the rebound, they hurry up down the court, and Ralph Davis, uh, there was a breakdown in the transition defense by the Celtics, and Ralph Davis scores. And now the Celtics only have an 11-point lead. So Kuzi gets a good pass, and uh, he is open, and I think we'll let him. He, he's really had a bad shooting game. He only has eight points. He's one for six on his on penetrating, uh, but we'll try again because and he draws a foul, and Oscar Robertson fouls him. So Kuzi will get two shots at the line, and that's the fourth foul for, you can see these little dots here, that's the fourth team foul. In 1960 and 61, you, you could get six team fouls. On the seventh, you started getting the bonus, which gave a player three chances to make two shots on a shooting foul and two chances to make one shot on uh, a non-shooting foul. So Kuzi's first shot is good, and his second shot is also good. So now the Celtics are back up by 12. We've got about half, half the quarter to play. Now this is going to be a steal. Ralph Davis has the ball stolen by Sam Jones. He strips the ball, and he charges up court to try to uh, go to the hoop, and they foul him, trying to stop him on the fast break. It looks like Hub Reed fouled him, and uh, that's the fifth team foul, and uh, now it looks like Cincinnati is going to bring in some other players. Uh, they take that Ralph Davis out, and they put in Bockhorn. Bockhorn can't really drive. All he can do is take, take outside shots, so I'll keep Sam Jones playing him close. And now here's the three-point play. Sam Jones, who has had a lot of foul trouble, so he only has seven points. He got his eighth point, and the Celtics are building up a larger lead now. So Robertson pa has an incredible pass to Twyman as he's cutting to the hoop, so he scores. He, uh, Robertson gets his 11th assist. Now, this now Bach, Bucky Bockhorn, <laughs> he fouls Sam Jones, uh, dribbling, and Jones. That's their sixth foul, but they get seven, so he's only going to get one free throw here. But and he makes it. <laughs> That's his ninth point. So under six minutes to go, they they get a, a great pass to Jordan underneath. He has an open shot, but he can't score. And Russell gets his 18th rebound. A lot of rebounding back in those days. And they come right out with a fast break. To, and Kuzi goes to the hoop. He can't make the fa he can't make the shot. Bob Boozer, who's from Omaha, Nebraska. There's even a street named after him. Gets the rebound out to Robertson on the fast break, and he scores. 29 points for Robertson now. They're going to have to make their run if they're going to make this a close game, which happens a lot with Stratomatic Baseball. They, uh, the <laughs> Royals are now uh, using a pressing defense <coughs> to try to get back in the game, and we and uh, Sam Jones can pass the ball to anybody. We're going to go to Tommy Heinsohn, who's trying to back in. Uh, to the hoop, and he it has his shot. He has his shot blocked, <laughs> so that wasn't very successful. They fast break the other way. Bob Boozer can't uh, can't score, but there's a offensive rebound by Jack Twyman, <coughs> and he makes that shot. I think that's his 28th point. Here, here's the pressing defense against Sam Jones, and. It's too much pressing, so they foul him. And that is the seventh foul for the team, so... And that's also Buckhorn's fifth foul, so they may take him out. And, uh, but anyway, yeah, in fact, I think they are taking him out. Well, no, they, they haven't taken him out yet, so... Jones gets two shots, makes the first one. 
You're going to leave Bockhorn in there. And he makes a second one. So now he has double digits. 11 points so far in the game. And th they try to go into Jordan, the center, and he turns it over. Now there's a switch. We've got the center, Phil Jordan guarding Tommy Heinsohn. And I'm going to look at Tommy Heinsohn's card. He's really good from the outside, so I think that Heinsohn has this big center on him. Uh, <laughs> big. <laughs> He's 6'10". Bill Jordan, 6'10", 205 pounds, real string bean. And Heinsohn's going to back up and take an outside shot, and he doesn't make it. Uh, Jordan gets the rebound, 4 minutes and 45 seconds. Here comes the fast break. Jordan's no good on the fast break, and he doesn't make a basket. But Bockhorn gets the offensive rebound. He can't make the second chance opportunity. Now Russell gets the ball. Here come the Celtics up fast. And we've got Bob Cousy going to the hoop. He gets the ball and he is fouled. They're calling it, he was guarded by Robertson, but they're calling the foul on Bockhorn. Bockhorn fouls out of the game. And they bring this Ralph Davis back in. And we're going, to, Ralph Davis can only take, he, he can't dribble very well, so we're going to play him close. And uh, now Kuzi gets a free throw, which he makes, and now the Celtics are up by 16. I thought that Cincinnati would be able to close the gap better than they are doing. Pick and roll. Robertson on pick and roll gets an open drive, gets an open uh, path to the hoop. And uh, he... Now, uh, it says that he makes the ball, it makes the hoop, it's 1 to 11, so if this number down here, which could be between 1 and 20, and it's just like 20 cards, so they're each the same, one number is no better than the other in terms of random uh, probability, it's a 5, so it's within 1 to 11, so he makes the shot. So now it's a 14-point game. They're going to be pressing, and uh, we'll see if they follow him. No, they don't follow him. Tough defense on Ramsey, so Ramsey has to pass to somebody because he can't do anything. We'll try Tommy Heinsohn again. Tommy tries to put it up and he does score. They didn't get the help defense over and he scored on a short jump hook. Now we've got four minutes to go and there's a turnover. Jordan turned it over. Now Kuzi slides off a pick and roll Russell finds him, so he's got a great open shot, and Kuzi will drive to the hoop, but it's blocked by Oscar Robertson, and there's an offensive team uh, rebound, so it went out of bounds, last touched, I guess, by Robertson on that block, and the Celtics call a great play, and they've got Sam Jones open, and Sam Jones will take the outside shot because they're guarding him close. Let's let him penetrate. Let's let him drive to the hoop, and he doesn't. He doesn't make the basket. It's out. But Russell gets the offensive rebound. Now this R means that he just sends it back out to run another play, and he he uh, he gets a lot of shots because of offensive rebounds, and he plays practically every minute. He's played 44 minutes of this game. I think he's only sat out two minutes, or even one minute. But he doesn't look to take the shot, so he sends it back out. And in fact, as we get down closer, I'll be holding uh, the, the ball a lot to try to use up as much uh, time as possible. So now Sam Jones has the ball, and he has to decide who to pass it to. Heinsohn hasn't been having a lot of luck, so we'll go to Ramsey, who's already got 21 points. And... Ramsey being guarded close. We'll see if he can dribble around on the way to the hoop. No, he misses the shot. Rebounded by Jordan. Here comes Cincinnati on the break. But they mess it up. There's a traveling violation. So I think the Celtics are getting closer and closer. There's a switch. Ralph Davis, the shooting guard, switches and is covering Bill Russell. So Bill is going to take him to the hoop. Try to use that mismatch, but he can't score. And... Russell gets the ball back and can't score again. 
and now Jack Twyman gets the rebound and they run the ball up as fast as they can and Twyman is able to score. So it's a 14 point game under three minutes to go, pressing defense. Ralph Davis forces Sam Jones to look for somebody else to take the shot. We'll go back to Heinsohn and Heinsohn has the ball down low. He maneuvers inside. Now this in inside man, it, this his success will be determined by how well the center uh, for Cincinnati is at blocking shots and we'll see the computer decides this and the shot's no good. I don't think he blocked it, he just forced him to adjust the shot. Twyman comes down on the break <coughs> and he for forces a foul and they call that I think on Sam, Sam Jones, that's his fourth foul. So they're coming back, Twyman already has 30 points, Twyman takes another, it takes his free throw, the first one is good and the second one is not good and they're not in the bonus yet but he gets his offensive he gets his own rebound and he scores it he puts it back in so now it's an 11 they could now there's a pressing defense they're going to steal the ball i think now they steal it on and uh, twyman steals it he goes to the he takes the ball as fast as he can and he scores so now i think they're under <laughs> 10 points They've got it down to single digits with two minutes and 24 seconds left. Ralph Davis is a little too aggressive on the pressing defense, and he fouls Sam Jones. So Sam is going to get two shots because they're in the bonus. He makes the first one. Sam Jones, let, let, this is a, really a kind of a bad part of the game. You can see how terrible, terrible this is. Uh, you know, it really looks terrible. And, uh, but it does, we can see how the players are doing. In fact, you can see how every play, uh, every single play in the game turned out. But Sam Jones has taken five, he's taken six free throws and he's made five of them. So he's doing pretty good. His second free throw is also good. So now it's back up to an 11 point lead, 2 minutes and 20 seconds left. The ball goes and uh, Ralph Davis hits Twyman going to the hoop and he scores. Now it's a 9 point lead. The Celtics bring the ball up. They get through the pressing defense. Now Sam Jones has to pass to anybody that has three asterisks in the yellow rectangle and all of these players do. Uh, I think he'll go to Ramsey because Ramsey has been doing well. Ramsey is going to try to go to the hoop. He goes to the hoop and he's fouled by Twyman, his fourth foul. And now he gets to make three to make two. Uh, the Royal, Royals have brought Wayne Embry back into the game to play center. He's a better center, I think, than... Phil Jordan was. So Ramsey, good free throw shooter, makes the first one. Ramsey makes the second one. And they're back up to a double digit lead. So under two minutes to go, Bob Boozer gets the ball over to Twyman. Twyman heads down the lane, but he can't hit the basket. But Robertson gets the offensive rebound, and he is fouled, taking the ball back up. Second foul on Kuzi. They're still not in the bonus. It's only their fourth team foul and Robertson hits the basket so uh, he's got 31 point, 32 points now his high score so far this season which hasn't been going on very long is 40 and now he's got 32 three points so he's I don't think he's going to hit 40 points now here we are under two minutes to go the Celtics have an option to hold the ball rather than and and try to run down the shot clock. So we're going to hold the ball. We're going to keep passing it to run out the clock, to run down the clock. And Robertson forces a turnover. So they only have a nine-point lead. Davis tries to shoot from outside, probably hurried that shot. And he's not a very good shot anyway. So he and he had no against the Celtics team defense and they're playing him close 
he had no opportunity, you can see here, to make the basket. So the Celtics defense is really overwhelming, smothering. But they get the, the offensive rebound, and Boozer cannot score, and Russell gets the rebound, his 22nd. And we're, we could have Sam Jones try to run a fast break, but we're going to slow him down. We're going to say we're going to hold the ball, and, we're, and now we may continue to hold the ball. They may have to intentionally foul us pretty soon, and they would be smart. Yeah, they foul Bill Russell when he has the ball. So uh, Russell, who is, like I say, a lousy free throw shooter, gets two shots because they're in the bonus back in 1960. He makes the first one, and the second one he also makes, so that didn't turn out so well. It's, it's now an 11-point lead with a little over a minute to go. I think it's going to be over. In fact, it wouldn't hurt me to take some of the Celtics out so that they can avoid the possibility of injury. Robertson tries an outside shot. He misses it, and the Celtics have the ball, and Kuzi comes down for the fast break shot. I'll let him take it, but he doesn't make it. I probably should have just held the ball. Russell grabs the rebound, puts it back up, but it's blocked. And now Twyman comes down, and he gets a tremendous outlet pass from Robertson, and he scores. So I'm glad I didn't take my starters out. And there's in the pressing defense, Ralph Davis fouls his fifth foul. Sam Jones goes back to shoot. They've got a nine-point lead. Oh, Sam Jones missed the first shot. He only gets two. And he makes the second shot for his 14th point. Leading scorer for the Celtics, Russell 26, Frank Ramsey 23. But and now I think no, Tommy Heinsohn couldn't steal it. He tried to steal it, but he stopped them. He, uh, he forced them to pass to Robertson. Robertson tries to drive to the hoop, uh, but he misses the shot. And Sam Jones gets the rebound. Now we're going to hold the ball until the game is over, kind of. We've got, we can't run the clock out completely, but now they're going to foul Russell again, I think, unless they've kind of given up. I think they have given up, so we're going to keep holding the ball, run the shot clock down. It's a 12. Keep holding it, run the shot clock. I guess we can't. I guess we can't hold the ball any longer for some reason. So uh, we get to pick who gets to shoot. We'll go back to Ramsey, who's our, and we'll see if he can get his 25th point. He drives the ball to the hoop. He can't make the shot. And Ramsey gets his own rebound. He'll try to put it back in. We'll see if Wayne Embry can uh, adjust the shot. He can't. So uh, Ramsey scores on the putback. And now there are 28 seconds left. Embry tries to shoot, but he has the shot blocked by Russell. And I wonder how many blocks Russell has had in the game. Boozer puts the ball back up. He gets an offensive rebound, and he scores. So there's the pressing defense. They handle the press. They set up their half point, their half court offense. And let's see what Russell has done in terms of uh, block shots. Russell has four block shots this game. Now we can hold the ball and we can practically run out the clock. Hold the ball again. They're not going to foul. They've given up. It's a 10 point lead. 13 seconds to go. And Russell with seven on the shot clock shoots. He misses. Boozer for Cincinnati gets the rebound, and they run the ball up really fast, although it's hopeless. Twyman is fouled with four seconds left, so he'll have to take those free throws. He makes the first one. He makes the second one. And his high this year for points scored in a game is 46. He has 40, and... He 
he actually has 41 now. So four seconds to go. We'll hold the ball, and that will probably do it. Oh, they foul him uh, intentionally. Ralph Davis has fouled out, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Okay, so Sam Jones gets his 15th point and his 16th point. Two seconds to go. That will end the game. And the Celtics win by a score of 10, 129 to 119. You can see this little, the player of the game was Bill Russell. The Celtics had 28 fast break points. Cincinnati had 16. They did. Cincinnati had 27 second chance points to Boston's 19. Points in the paint. Cincinnati had 42 points in the paint. Boston had 38. And Cincinnati did lead early in this game by 10. But the game story, star of the game, Bill Russell, the hometown fans enjoyed themselves as Boston bested Cincinnati by the score of 129 to 119. Bill Russell had 26 points and 23 rebounds for Boston. Frank Ramsey had 25 points. Jack Twyman had 41 points and 20 rebounds for Cincinnati. Oscar Robertson recorded a triple-double for Cincinnati with 33 points, 12 assists, and 13 rebounds. And the same two teams will go at it once again in their next game on the schedule. So that's it from Lefty Dad at the Boston Garden for this game on November 5th, 1960.